Good morning, everybody. It's the Drive to School podcast. I'm still Pastor Goodman, and this is still Michelle Bauman. She is the director of Y for Life. How are you doing? Good. I am great. It is a great day to be here, and I hope that the, the drive to school is going well. So far, so good. Um, we'll keep it short and we'll keep it sweet because like long road trips, they get old. We just had to move um, basically everything in our higher thing storage unit from Holt, Missouri into Iowa. And so I got to take a six hour truck ride and the, the drive to school only lasts 15 minutes. Plus, I hate listening to myself. So it was <laughs> it was not as good. Um, hopefully yours is going to go better, guys. All right. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. I like it. Let's add, let's set reasonable. Let's, it's going to be, well, you're here. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. It, it, it'll, it'll at least be good, right? Awesome. <laughs> For good. Awesome. Um, so Michelle, what are we going to talk about today? Let's talk about, let's talk about the 10 commandments. Let's it. talk about specifically uh, commandment one and two. So yeah, let, let's, When we talk about the 10 commandments, we, um, you know, how does that, how does that even relate to life issues? Right. But it does, it does. They all do in so many ways. Um, in particular, we know that the commandments are given to us because God wants to give us gifts, right? He loves us enough to give us gifts. And we know that his way is the best way. And so he creates these commandments to protect the gifts that he intends to give. And very often those gifts are connected to life. So that's what I want to do for the next few sessions, uh, I think, is, is take a look at those commandments and see just how God is protecting uh, the gift of life through his commandments. Um, commandment one, you shall have no other gods, right? That's a great one, of course, to start with. It is the first commandment, but that one is excellent to talk about life. So we have kind of three parts, right? Um, we have, when we talk about God, let's talk about the three persons of God. We have God as creator, right? Uh, God as redeemer and God as paraclete. We're going to get back to that in just a minute, but God protects, um, his relationship with us in, in the first commandment. So when we talk about how you shall have no other gods, what God intends for us is to recognize that he is, uh, the giver. And we are the receiver. He is the creator and we are the created. He is the redeemer and we are the people who need to be redeemed. So um, when we look at that first part, that first person, when we look at how God is our creator, it's very, very easy to see how um, God is the upholder and the giver of life, right? When we go back to Genesis, God, uh, God hand makes us. Um, he creates us not only uh as, as just single human beings, but human beings meant for community, human beings meant for oneness. And um, we see this as a very special creation. So we know um, that we, as God's, the, the pinnacle of God's creation are, are people who are loved, who are important, and this shapes our identity, right? So when we talk about uh, life issues, in just a minute, uh, that identity is going to take, take, um, going to be an important part, right? It's, it's, it's going to, to affect some of those life issues. So uh, God is our creator. God is our redeemer, right? Um, we, we recognize that we need someone to save us from our sin, that we are imperfect people and, and we are incapable of living up to the, the law that God, God gives. And so God sends his son, Uh, because he loves us that much. And Christ loves us that much that he will die for us, um, that he will make eternal life possible, that he will give us that life uh, that God intended from the very beginning. Um, And then God as paraclete, as as, um, helper, as um, the giver of faith and and the maintainer of that faith, um, who also stands beside side us and advocates for us, uh, who doesn't leave us alone in this world uh, to make our way, but actually walks with us and is with us. So um, these three three um, realizations really do um, verify just how important our life is. Um, and how important the lives of others are. So I can see you're about to say something. Do you want to say something? (laughs) I thought I saw you open your mouth. 
No, it's it's fantastic. I've, I've been uh, kind of following along with this. And it's it's such an important thing because we can recognize that life issues have a lot to do with you shall not murder. But even just starting with the idea that in the first commandment that we have a good and loving God who actually wants to be our God so much that he insists that we have no other God. That means that when he tells us things are good gifts, they, they actually are. Um, the, the idea then that we would start to look to uh, the God of all creation as a God who actually wants to care for his creation, it, it, it is going to shape how we listen to him and how we view each other. I, I love where you're going with this. Yeah. So when we, you know, when we are in that relationship and we recognize God as our creator and, and we recognize that we receive all good things from him, that's the right relationship to be in. But life issues start to happen when we turn that on its head, right? When we say, mm, I'm going to be creator, right? Um, I'm going to recreate myself into the person I want to be or into the person society desires that I become. And so then we start to have life issues like um, eating disorders, uh, life issues like identity identity, questioning our identity, right? Identity confusion, gender confusion. We start to have life issues um, later in life, right? We're talking to high schoolers right now, but later in life when we get married and, and we wanna have kids, we start to have issues about, you know, demanding the gift of children, right? When it's not maybe given to, to everyone. Uh, we, we have issues about our identity as, as um, individuals, who, who want to look good uh, to society. So, and that's where that redeemer comes in, right? When we refuse to recognize um, that we, we actually have sin that needs to be addressed. And so we cover it up and maybe we cover it up through, um, through a drug abuse or alcohol abuse because we can't cope. And, and we can't recognize that. Uh, we don't want to recognize that we need help. We need an assistant. We need someone to stand by us. We need someone to hold us up. And so um, when we reject that, that relationship that God has given us to him, then we start to end up um, depending on ourselves or uh, remaking ourselves into what society wants us to be. And then we've got, then we've got problems, right? Um, and those problems go to, to the root of the first commandment um, that, you know, when we, re we don't recognize who we are and who God has created us to be, um, then we turn inward and uh, inside is, is nothing good, nothing good, but what God has created to be good and which we have, we have um, remade into something substandard, into something that isn't necessarily good. Right. It's actually one of the biggest differences between us and God. Um, not only are, are we, you know, not um, on our own without sin uh, or, 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 you know, everlasting to everlasting, all the things that make God God. But one of the biggest differences is actually found in action. You mentioned we are, we are turned inward. Um, God expresses himself outward. There, he, he, he reaches out to us. He, he doesn't simply focus on his wants and his desires, uh, but he actually even, uh, we, we know this in the person of the son, he, he says, Father, thy will be done. And he, he bears the cross for sinners, not just what's best for him and, and his wants, but what's best for, for his creation. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, obviously um, the first commandment flows very well into that second commandment. Um, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord, your God. And um, if, you know, again, people might look at that one and go, really, how, do, how does that connect to life issues? <laughs> um, and, and um, I think it's a good question to ask, right? How does it connect to life issues? Well, um, if we so when we connect, when we think about our own reputation, and we'll talk more about this when we talk about the Eighth Commandment, when we think more, when we think about how important our reputation is, um, even more so, God's reputation is important. And when we are um, defaming that reputation, when we are uh, defaming the gift of that reputation that God has given us, because of course, we bear his name when we go into the world right? We bear the name of Christ and that, that should be a good name. We want to be, um, to be part of a family whose father has a good reputation. Um, and so when, when God, the father has a good reputation, when God, the son has a good reputation that reflects on us as Christians. Um, but 
um, if we are defaming that name, why would anyone else want to lean on the God that we call God, right? The God who can give, truly give life, not only in this world, but life eternal. And so again, we've got a, we've got a life issue, right? Life issues um, that, that can be connected to this one as well. So when when we talk about cancel culture, um, when we talk about uh, the, the necessity, um, the, well, the emptiness uh, that the world gives, we have something better to offer. And that, that something better is wrapped up in the name and in the actions of God himself. Absolutely. And I mean, uh, we, we see this in, in our catechism too. Uh, Luther kind of capitalizes on this, especially in the large catechism. He says, the biggest way we break the second commandment is we, we tell lies about who God is. We have false doctrine, uh, that we would leave people alone in their sins, that we would tell people that there are unforgivable sins, that we would tell people that, that God would not love them if they have done a thing or been a place or, or been a victim of something. Then we, we are, are not only ruining God's reputation, but what we are doing is we're painting him as a liar to people who would only want to know uh, how, him as merciful. Uh, when it comes to life issues, the idea that somebody would know who their God is and, and, and what he has done for them, it, it's paramount. Yeah, what a tragedy, right? What a tragedy um, when, when someone needs to hear that message and that message has been um, reformed into, into something very unsacred, right? When, when the name has become a curse word or when the, when the, the message has been ruined by that. So, so yeah, again, you know, we have, we have these gifts, we have these gifts in the commandments. We have these gifts um, that God intends to give uh, through his name, through his right relationship with us. And he wants to protect those gifts for us. Um, And so, so we seek to do that. We seek to, to follow, um, to fear and love God above all things, to follow uh, his wisdom for our lives so that our lives might be upheld, but also so that our neighbors' lives might be upheld. I love it. That's been wonderful. Um, so the first two commandments, the, the stuff about God, it's going to actually shape how we start to understand what a life issue is because we understand that God is a God of life. And so to, to better understand him, to, to, uh, to be in right relation with him, as, as you kind of put it, uh, it it's going to change how we see the rest of the life issues. Because if you're looking at this simply in terms of a, what thou shalt not do, you're going to miss the whole point that God loves life enough to redeem it and sanctify it, like, like you said. And so when we get to, to sort of start with who God is, it's going to change how we start to deal with our neighbors whom he loves too. Absolutely. Well, anything else to add on the first couple commandments? I think we're good. I love it. Michelle Bauman is the director of Why for Life. They put out great, great work. And if you like this, I, I strongly suggest you look them up on social media. Uh, Michelle, what are your handles? One more time out there on Instagram. Yeah, so whyforlife.org. Uh, that's our website. But on Instagram, it's LFL Why for Life. Love it. Thanks so much for being here with us on the Drive to School. Thank you.